Hey, my name is Fabiola Maurice, and as I said before, I'm part of the Guardian project team. And I'm here today to talk about an application, an app for Android and for iPhones that is going to help you add uh, provenance and authenticity to all the media you capture with your mobile device. This tool, the same way as all the CIA tools, is free and is also open source. And what I mean by that is that the source code of the app is available for anyone to inspect it, to reuse it, and also to modify it, which builds trust again, um, among our users. This app was developed by the Guardian Project team, and the Guardian Project team has been around for 15 years, developing free open source technologies to help our users enhance their, pri their privacy, get access to the information, um, add authenticity and provenance to the, to the media they produce. And we are a very diverse team from all over the world. We are researchers, developers, designers, working hard to create these tools and make it available for you. We are very thankful to the Thompson Foundation for inviting us today and let us share this tool with you. The app comes from the idea that every camera should have a proof mode feature that could enable users to verify what they're seeing. And the implementation of this app use enhanced sensor-driven metadata, hardware fingerprinting, and cryptographic signing that is gonna allow users to share these signings, uh, these signatures with third parties not, uh, to notarize it and verify that the media you're seeing hasn't been tampered with. And you can find more information about it on our website, which is proofmode.org. Now, this is the part of the Guardian team, the Guardian project team that is involved in the proof mode project. We work very hard with communities on the ground to continue, continually improve the app. Um, we have partners implementing our code in other apps like Safe and Signal. And we have other partners like Starling Labs and Witness using the app to document things during their work. And um, as Deborah said before, um, when we talk about disinformation and misinformation, the terms become very broad. Uh, so with this graphic, we wanna show you the, er the four specific areas of misinformation and disinformation that you can address using the app. In this case is imposter content, fabricated content, false context, and manipulated content. Um, not only with proof mode, but with C2PA credentials, you can address all those areas and we're gonna show you how. But before we move to that, uh, I wanna show you some of the real cases in which the app has been already used to collect evidence. The first case was work done by our partners at Starling Labs. They used the app as one of the tools to gather evidence against the perpetrators of a civilian massacre that happened like 30 years ago in Bosnia. And this story was published on the Rolling Stone website. You can still see it on their website. Um, by the way, we're gonna share all these uh, slides so you can always come back and check the websites to see that information. Another use case where the app was used was by our partners again from Starling Labs and the HiFact Workers Cooperative. In this case, they use the app to document um, the bombing of schools in Kharkiv, Ukraine. And with this documentation, they created a dossier of digital evidence that was presented in the International Criminal Court. From this case, we have a video that shows you exactly how the evidence was scattered using the app. Uh, but before we show you the video, I just want to let you know that these are images of possible uh, war crimes. So be aware of that. And what you're seeing in the video is one of the sites that were documented for this project. And the person you're seeing is using an Android device with proof mode on it and the dedicated camera of the app to gather evidence of the site. Once he's done collecting all that evidence, he can select from it the images he wants to share and generate metadata and proof. 
from the app, he selects the images that he is going to share with someone else, select the app to generate the metadata that is going to be attached to these images. A zip file is created, and in this case, he used Signal to share that evidence. As you can see, it's a very simple process that any of you can do using your mobile devices. And it's going to attach provenance and authentication to the evidence you gather. Another case in which the app was used was a caravan in Mexico that traveled across many states in the south. These were indigenous organizations and also activists documenting damage to indigenous communities and ecological sites done by global warming and also by development. But they also use the app to document the harassment they receive from local authorities like the army and the police. And you can see all the documentation they did on El Sur Resiste .org, the website that is on the screen. Finally, um, another group of partners, FASILA, which is a group of independent journalists in the MENA region, was working on a story about inflation and market prices, and they used proof mode to capture some of the media that was used for that story. As you know, we have a practical uh, part of the session in which you get to test the app. So right now I'm gonna give you time. If you haven't installed the app, you can get it from the QR codes on the screen or going to proofmode.org slash install. Um, we have about a minute. If you installed the app on Android last week, there is a new version. So I recommend to get the update. And while do, you do that, I just want to tell you that we are an open source community and we value your feedback. We take very seriously your bug, bug reports and also we love to hear about use cases. Um, on the website, you can find our contact information to reach out. But at the end of this presentation, we are also going to give you all the contact information to answer your questions and to hear about suggestions for new features or if you have a good, any issue on your device, we can help you with that too. And now if everyone has the app on their devices, I'm gonna move forward. And together we're gonna take a look at the user interface of the app. Um, once you install the app and give the app all the permissions it needs to perform, the first thing you're gonna see every time you open it is the uh, screenshot on the far left of the screen. And that's what we call the activity view. And that screen is gonna show you all the evidence you have gathered using the app. And it's also gonna show you if you have shared that evidence and when you share it. From the activity view, you're gonna find a camera icon and that's gonna open the dedicated camera in the app. We recommend that you use a dedicated camera in the app when you are actively collecting information. And it's, this is gonna guarantee that the evidence is generated automatically. But on Android devices, you can also enable the app to run in the background. And then all the media you capture with your default camera and your device can also produce uh, proof mode evidence. You also have the option to import files from other devices. For example, a DSRL camera, um, if you took pictures with a professional camera and you want to add metadata to it and a fingerprint as a proof of existence of that uh, image, you can use the app to import those images and attach this information to the images. Finally, the app is going to allow you to create two types of proof. One is basic and one is robust. And we're going to talk in detail about this later on in the presentation. Now let's talk about how the app works. Basically, proof mode is going to get access to all the sensors in your device, like the compass, the GPS, the cellular radios, and then create this rich set of metadata that is going to be attached to the media that you're capturing. Currently, the app also allows you to add C2PA credentials to images. And this is gonna help you not only to protect your work, but also to add provenance and authentication to it. Uh, the app um, 
does its best to capture fresh and accurate location. It verifies that the phone hasn't been tampered with, that is not a hack phone or a modified phone by checking with Apple or with Google. It adds these um, fingerprints that then can be notarized by third parties to verify that the, uh, the image hasn't changed since the time of creation. And you can find all the information about the metadata, including the proof files at proofmore.org slash metadata. Now let's talk about the types of proof you can create using the app. The first one is basic. You're gonna use basic when you don't wanna share all the metadata attached to an image or you don't need to share it publicly. And that, what this is gonna do is just create a fingerprint that matches all the pixels of the image you're sharing. And that's gonna be used to guarantee that from the time of creation to the time of view, the image hasn't changed using third-party notaries that you trust like Google or open timestamps. There's gonna be another cases where you wanna add all the metadata possible to the image or the video or the audio file to back up what you are presenting on your news. And for this, you can use Share Robust. When you select Share Robust, a zip file is gonna be created that is gonna include all the images you selected, plus all the metadata captured by the app, plus the signatures and the fingerprints that the app generates. And we put it in a zip file because then when you share it using a sharing app, it's not gonna be compressed or modified. It's gonna stay the same. We also allow you to download this proof directly to your device instead of sending it. And that way you can share it later or you can share it locally using AirDrop or Bluetooth. As we said before, the app has a dedicated camera and that's the best way to ensure all the metadata is being extracted and the proof is being produced as you capture um, or document an event. But you can also enable the, the app to run in the background of your Android device. And then um, all the media that you're capturing with the default camera of your device can also generate uh, proof metadata. And you can also import files from other devices. We want our users to have the freedom to choose how they share. And so once the proof is generated, or users get the option to select any of the sharing apps available in their devices, and they can also download it to their device and share it locally or share it later. Now, this is the complex part. So I'm gonna try to explain it um, really slow and as simple as I can of how we build trust in this proof metadata that is being generated. We came up with this concept of three layers of verification in which the first layer is integrity. And here is where the fingerprints and the digital signing and the cryptographic keys are generated by the app. It's all done automatically. You don't have to know anything about cryptography. And then you can use this fingerprint and share it with third party notaries that you trust. Um, that are gonna verify that the fingerprint and the image you're sharing matches and it hasn't been tampered with. Um, then the second layer is consistency. And consistency is when we check the metadata contained in the file against itself. For example, in the video we saw about collecting um, proof of the bombing of schools in Ukraine, all the pictures for, were from, a, from the same site. And if one picture doesn't match, like if there was a picture from the beach, for example, then that has to be flagged and we had to review if the evidence actually makes sense. And then finally we have synchrony and this is where we try to match the metadata in the files against the real world to see if the metadata of the event matches the quality, the frequency, the scale, the scope of the event documented, like the weather, like the um, cell phone towers around, the Wi-Fi towers around, to see if uh, the proof came from actually the place that it's saying it came from. Now, to verify that, that the metadata in the proof files is is authentic, we created this tool 
the proof check tool that any person can use when they receive a proof mode file, a zip file, to verify it. You just have to go to proofmode.org slash, slash verify. You have to upload the zip file and the tool is going to do the check for you. Um, something that uh, I want to make clear is that we don't keep that evidence. You upload it just for the check, but we don't save that data. The process is run locally. And if the tool sees that everything seems fine, you're going to have a report like the one on the screen. And that report is showing on the left side all the um, images that are in the file. And then on the right side, all the information about that uh, bundle of proof and also the checks that it passed. Like in this case, that file had 22 pictures. It's showing you when those pictures were created. It's showing you that that media was signed. It's showing you that the proof of data existed. And it was also verified by a third party. In this case, they opened timestamps. We are also happy to announce that using proof mode, you can also add C2 PA credentials to images with the app. As a result, our users have access to an open ecosystem of proof where they can produce and check evidence uh, using the proof mode system and the proof mode proof check. But they also can add C2PA credentials that then can be checked using CAI tools like Verify or Photoshop. And to see how that can be done, we're going to use this example. This is another bundle of proof captured by one of our team members. Him and his family were uh, picking up trash in Cape Cod, and they used proof mode to document the trash that they found. On the left, you can see all the images of the trash they collected. And on the right, you can see the location of where those pictures were taken. And at the bottom, you can see a satellite map of the area they covered while collecting, while collecting this trash. Now, let's say that you want to add C2PA credentials to one of those images. How would you do it? First, you have to select the image on the app. And then on Android devices, it's going to look something like this. Once you select the image, you're going to see a share icon. And when you select the share icon, the first screen on the far left is going to appear. You have to select the share option in the robust section. And once you select that part, you're going to see the two options. The first one is to generate the zip file. We talk about it. And the second one is to attach embedded C2PA credentials to the image. If you select this option, the app is going to ask you if you, you want to temporarily share this image with the proof sign cloud service to add the credentials. And once you hit OK, it's going to take a few seconds to upload the image, to verify it, to sign it, and then download it back to your device. Once that's done, it's going to show you the options to share it. The options are the apps that you have installed in your device that allow you to share data. On an Apple device, it's the same process. It looks different, but basically there are the same steps. You select the image, then you see the share icon. If you select that, you're going to see the two options to generate the zip file proof or to add the content credentials. If you select the second one, again, it's going to ask you if you want to share the file with proof sign on the cloud to attach the credentials. You hit OK. It's going to take a few seconds to do that and then show you the apps you can use to share that new proof that you generated. Now, if you open the new image that you have generated uh, on one of the CIA tools like Verify that we, we, we saw before in Colleen's presentation, it's going to show you the content, the content credentials icon at the top right of the image. And on the, left, on the right, it's going to show you all the metadata attached to that image. In this case, it's showing you the tool that was used to generate the metadata, the date and time when it was generated, and then the proof check that added all the content. If you want to inspect the image furthermore, there is another tool created by the CIA um, initiative, which is the C2PA tool command line. And that's going to show you not only the C2PA credentials embedded in the image, 
but also all the report generated by proof check. If you open the same image in one of the platforms that already have uh, content credential readers, like Behance by Adobe, you can display all the content credentials attached to the image. In this case, it's showing us again um, the image with the content credentials icon and the tool that was used to generate the content credentials, the date and time, but it's also giving you a link to run the proof check by yourself. Now let's imagine that you wanna edit this image before you post it on social media. In this case, we wanted to zoom in the sea turtle signs and we're using Photoshop with the content credential feature enabled to do that. And as you can see, once we enable that, uh, Photoshop is already added, adding more information. In this case, it's uh, adding the name of the person doing the edit that is linked to his account. It's also adding his social media handles, in this case is Instagram, and it's logging all the edit history of the image. It's also showing at the bottom um, which tool was used to edit this image. Once you're done and you export it, and we go back to the verify tool to inspect it, now you're gonna see three layers in this new image that we are sharing. On the left, we, say, we see the original image. Then we see the image with the C2PA embedded credentials by, um, for, by proof mode. And at the top, you see the crop image generated by Photoshop. And then on the right, you're gonna see the display of all the, process, the credentials added by Photoshop, which is who signed this file, who created it, the social media handles, and the app that was, the platform that was used to, be, to edit it and then all the history of the edits this image went through. And if you use an inspect tool like Colleen showed before, you can also see the previous image and then the results. 